Hello and welcome to Real Hi-Fi Help. Let's look at the 80% speaker rule. So, <clears throat> I've learned from experts that about 80% of the music that we listen to coming from a speaker actually comes from the mid-range units. So, that's kind of interesting. And let me just try and prove a point by just reading this. And that's... Um, I would say that from my experience, having listened to many, many hundreds of speakers, that the majority of speakers in the world would play best from a four to seven meter distance from the back to, uh, to the front, from the front to the back wall, because this keeps the focus, the attack, the grunt, the slam, the resolution, everything in balance most of the time. There are exceptions to the rule, of course, like with everything in life, but this is like the magic, magic uh, room that you generally want to keep a speaker in, four to seven meters. And so what happens if you go within four meters? Well, I've tried it actually a couple of places and the sound becomes usually very uncomfortable because you're basically being pushed against the wall. I mean, depending on how big your speaker is, but generally, you're, if it's a pretty big speaker, you're being pushed against the wall, and it's like hitting into you, and it's not fully releasing the sound. So it's almost like you're, you're, you're in, the, in the crossfire, and it's just you know blowing past you. So that's why it's, it is usually around four to seven meters, you want to be at the very end of where this uh, signal stops, but not too far, so um, it gets bad in a different way. So, yeah, it has to fully unload, and that usually happens around four meters. You have to find out what's, what's perfect for you. It, of course, depends on the room, the equipment you use, the speaker everything you know so this is just a general rule to take into consideration but let's just say that you go past seven meters i myself have 11 meters from my front to my back roll and most people will not be able to control that and i can't fully control my sound because of that but I had to choose between a room that was about four meters, perhaps a tiny bit less, and one that was 11 meters. And I took the 11 meter one because this type of speaker is really um, revealing and, and sends a very powerful signal. So having that in a four meter room would totally overwhelm me. Uh, it would be cool in one way, but also... Um, stability wise it i just wouldn't enjoy it quite as much so i would want a smaller speaker than the one that i have now if i had a four meter room but having my speaker i mean ideally if i had my speaker in a room that was four to seven meters probably i would say five five and a half meters that that would probably be like for me the best solution one of my friends has an audio note speaker and he only has, I think, four, maybe four and a half meters. And it's just, you know, it crushes you like, oof, oof, oof. But at least he's got blinds at the back and he's got a very good talent for tuning the equipment. He's just very good at, at dealing with his overall system so he can get away with it, okay? It sounds actually fantastically good at his place so yeah but if, if he had like a brick wall and it was only four meters from the front to the back wall and he had an audio note a top audio note speaker like me i mean my god would it just wreak havoc and just create so much chaos but he had blinds uh, at the back because there there's windows at the back so he can control the sound a lot better than, than most people that just have like a flat wall and nothing on the wall. So again, that also matters what you have on the back wall.
dealing with all the reflections. So yeah, let's just say that you go past seven meters. So what happens? Usually with most speakers, when you go past seven meters, the bass sucks out. And it's like someone is, is gradually turning off uh, the bass the more that you move away from seven meters. So let's say that you're from seven meters. It might be okay at that point, but if you move like eight, nine, ten meters, man, will you miss out on a lot of bass. And the problem is that you will also lose a bit of timing because there's just such a big difference. So the, the focus, the immediateness, having all the detail come together, having it all make sense, creating that uh, crispy, fast response, it, it becomes very difficult because the treble, the mid-range and the bass have a tendency of like going away from each other. And you can easily lose control of your system um, with that happening. So also um, know this, that uh, when you have speakers, small speakers, and they have these uh, small units and small cabinets, a bit like uh, this speaker here from Verity, you have to be careful placing those speakers in a small, um, in a big room, sorry, <laughs> in a big room, because those, those mid ranges will have to work so hard on filling that entire room up. So it of course helps when you have a speaker like Verity and you have a backfiring bass port, you know, it helps like boost the bass, but it can also compensate too much. So this goes boom, boom, boom. And this is like firing out like eight meters towards you, you know, that that's not good. You know, you don't want a small speaker like this and you're sitting like eight meters away over here. That's not good. If, with a small speaker like this, I suggest only being about four, maybe five meters away. You can probably in theory get away with like se six or seven meters, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you had like your sidewalls relatively close to each other, again, boosting the signal towards you. So stuff you have to consider, stuff you really, really have to consider. Um, and let me show you some examples, guys. Um, so we have the smaller speaker here. And let's just say that's probably f a best fit for like 15 to 20 square meters. So you don't want really more than four or five meters from this back wall to where you're sitting, maybe six meters, maybe, maybe even seven meters, stretching it a bit. That, that's really stretching it because this is like a five inch unit. It's going to be working hard. And especially if you have transistor gear with a small speaker, with small cabinet in a big room with a big distance over to you, that transistor gear will make the sound usually very harsh very unnatural and very fatiguing. So again, you might want to reconsider having some tube gear if you want to fill like a giant space out with a small speaker. So let's just move up. And here we probably have something like an Otello or something like that. That's substantially boosted in, in sound. So yeah, we can get away with a slightly bigger distance, slightly bigger room and so on, you know, with the models, so and so on. But notice Verity doesn't have a lot of mass around the mid tone area here. And that's, I would say, even though Verity is probably like one of the, I would say at least one of the top 10 speaker manufacturers in the world, they still have a hard time being connected to a system that is, what can we say, ultra revealing or a bit on the thin side. And then being placed in a random room where the person does not control the room very well. So a lot of speakers, they have, you know, like an even top and even bottom so that the middle range and the treble gets a bit more of a, of a natural boost. So that would be like the Achilles heel of the Verity speakers that it could lack a bit of bite in the uh, in, in the middle range, especially if you haven't placed it well. So you want to have Verity speakers generally 
pretty close. I can't say exactly how close, but I would say usually with most of the speakers within a couple of feet of the side walls and the back walls. Like typically for me, I would have it like two, two feet away from the back wall, two feet away from the side walls. And then perhaps three feet when you're moving up in like over here, around here, and then perhaps like five feet with the big ones here, you know? So um, something to, to consider, something to, to really think about. And uh, let's just move on to some of the other examples I have. Now we have a BMW D3 800 model. And that's like basically the only BMW speaker that I can personally recommend with most transistor gear. And this is a speaker that is generally pretty, pretty uh, big on bass and middle tone uh, richness. And it has a very deep cabinet probably like a, around a meter can't really see it on this picture but that helps keep um, the sound alive in a big room so you could in theory go past seven meters with these without feeling too much of a loss but I would still keep it around six or seven meters at maximum if that's possible so um, be aware of that. So I would say that generally with this rule, when you enter this size of speaker and they're about a meter deep, then you can go past seven meters without necessarily losing too much. So that, that's a good rule to, to remember. Also because it's warmish and forgiving in the sound. So let's just go over to another speaker. Focal, bigger units. And uh, probably here, yeah, you could in theory go to like seven to 10 meters with this uh, speaker, but I wouldn't do it. You know, personally, I would, I would stay at the six to seven meters, perhaps eight meters distance for the perfect balance. So um, that, that's just very good to remember. And um, one thing you have to be really careful with when you have a, a speaker with a lot of units, when you place a speaker with a lot of units freely outside from the back and the side walls, and there's a huge distance from the front to the back wall, let's just say that's like 10, 12 meters from the front to the back wall. Usually a, a, a um, speaker with a lot of units will just go nuts. It will just go pumping out sound. Doo, 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 doo. It will be so difficult keeping it under control making it musical, making it organic. So I, I highly suggest that when you're dealing with speakers that have a lot of units, don't go past seven to 10 meters, you know, um, even though it's big and has a big cabinet and it's pretty powerful bass and all of that, try and still keep it within just within seven meters if it's possible because um, a lot of units on a big distance, that can create a lot of chaos where they just don't work together, all the units. So even though it's a big speaker here, you know, the middle ranges here aren't really that big. I'm guessing they're like four inches or five inches, you know, and that's not a lot. It's not a lot because then the bass is going to basically be um, compensating for the mid range. It won't be a perfect, uh, timed experience so uh, be be careful of that be really careful of that so yeah i mean we're moving into the 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 really exclusive class of speakers and this is like the old model i think it's called rockport arrakis and it's a huge speaker very powerful very warm in sound still very revealing fantastic speaker i also wish i, I had a speaker like this Notice that it also has these like giant, I think it's 15 or 18 inch um, drivers here. Crazy. I think it's inside and on the outside. Crazy speaker. Um, but again, you have to be careful with this, you know, and notice the fact that these drivers are actually going towards the, uh, the vinyl equipment here. So that that's obviously not good sound wise. That's going to get into the... Uh, the source material and you're going to hear it somehow but when you have this size of speaker it's easier getting away with having more than seven meters 
from the front wall here to the back wall where you're sitting. And I think this is actually a pretty decent uh, setup that he has done, except for having the like the vinyl over here <laughs> and then the bass just pumping like boof, boof, boof. That's gotta be disturbing, but <clears throat> you could in theory place this like half a meter to a meter more towards the back wall. I know he has like a weird wall thing going on here, so that could probably be something that he's trying to avoid. You never really know. Um, also look at the uh, the wall plugs here, how many power sockets he has here. That's a bit unusual, but yeah, kind of interesting, kind of interesting. Just wanted to show that to you guys. So um, Audio Note, my experience with Audio Note is that I have listened to so many shows with Audio Note and I just feel that when Audio Note go with these giant rooms and they only place like these small speakers or these slightly bigger speakers, or even the biggest speakers that they have to offer, the ANJ and the ANE models, it just gets horrible. The the timing, um, the naturalness, um, it just becomes so gruesome listening to this because I know Audio Note is the best gear in the world. I know it's the best gear, but it just you know, at many of these shows, it just doesn't sound like the best because, I mean, many times there's like six, seven, eight, nine, ten meters from the front wall to the back wall. And you don't want that with Audio Note. Audio Note is a bit special. And this is just my personal opinion. I know that everybody's uh, different, but I feel that four to five meters, that is ideal. And having a piece of furniture in the middle that isolates the sound and perhaps stretching it to seven meters that will probably fully unload it but still in, in a balanced way i feel that once you move past seven meters even with with the bigger models that they have i mean you can get away with it probably seven to ten meters with like the biggest models that they have like a n e um sogon uh, soto model you know those insane models that almost no one owns on earth there there's so much pressure that you can get away with probably seven to ten meters while it still sounds good but gen but you know generally all audio note speakers four to seven meters keep it there you'll get so much better sound it will um, make it a lot better a lot better and fantasy, you know, there isn't a hell of a lot of pressure that comes from these uh, speakers. So make sure you have them really, really close to the back walls, really, really close to the side walls. And very importantly, you have to have something within the speakers, a cupboard, piece of furniture, LP boxes, whatever. It really helps these speakers put out some pressure because these speakers do not have a cabinet. They are open uh, fabric design here and over here. So they need a lot of help around them to sound really, really good. So four to six meters, that's like the ideal spot for me, what I consider. And the same with the Big Brother. It's like, again, four to six meters, maybe seven meters. Um, don't go past that. that that's my experience. And let's just have a look at these. I just took a random pair of um, stand uh, speakers on the net. I don't even know what, what brand it is. But generally, when you have this type of construction, they're actually pretty pretty. Um, when you have this type of construction here, you don't want to have um, like, like a giant um, amount of meters from the front to the back roll, you know speakers like this that already are pretty rolled off in in general with all bookshelf speakers they're they're pretty rolled off and they don't have a lot of bottom and if you start putting them in a big room man is that bass gonna suck it even more out um so uh, yeah generally four to six meters that's like the rule and, you, and i think six meters is still a bit like eh, you know Four, four, five meters, I would say most times. Six meters, that's stretching it a bit. And seven meters, that's like almost impossible because I feel that with most stand uh, bookshelf speakers that 
it just thins out the sound too much already at around seven meters you can already feel it totally deteriorating and falling apart you need like um you need generally a, a really big floor stand or speaker to to pump up to seven meters and perhaps a tiny bit past that so again with these things you know satellites uh, surround speakers again for four to five meters in general probably only like three to five meters if they're really weak and, and pathetic and and yeah even though you have a subwoofer your it still will do compensation sound while this is all over the place so i mean you can get away with it more because you can have a subwoofer but still there's, there's going to be a time lag these are not going to cover a lot of sound um yeah but then i can now we get into something very exclusive that almost no one owns on, on planet earth and that's peak consult peak consult makes some crazy powerful speakers there's a lot of pressure in these speakers and you're, you're most likely never going to be able to demo a pair or go to a show that has peak consult but this this also costs like, like this set of speakers here probably costs like i don't know like five hundred thousand uh dollars or something like that something crazy uh, by the way one of the t top 10 um speakers in the world uh, in my opinion but there's so much pressure from these speakers so this is like the, one of the few exceptions where you want to go with like seven to ten meters just so it doesn't blast past you so but yeah notice the fact that there isn't a lot of that, that there is a lot of room from this back of the speakers to the uh, the front roll here so i would actually it's, it's an insane amount of gear i would actually stack all of this closer together like up here and then i would take it perhaps like a half a meter to a meter further back just to make the sound more digestible and accessible so it doesn't shoot past the listening position and i would actually uh angle the speakers a bit in to keep a better focus because the sound has a tendency with most speakers if you just keep them flat like this most speakers will just sound irrelevant not focused uh kind of all over the place and it just sound like a completely different speaker compared to slightly in or a lot in so you have to kind of figure that out with your particular speaker so um let me just see this is a picture I found here, and this is this is a great example of someone doing a, a, a proper job, having it close to the back wall, having it close to the side walls, having this furniture in the middle. It helps keep so much control over the sound and make it so natural and organic. If you were to remove this thing in the middle, the sound would be a lot more chaotic and more about the sound effects, like, look at me, look at me sound effects sound effects sound effects and it will just be shouting more and 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 kind of uh, working against the music so um yeah that's a great example of how to do it and uh, you know i've got some nice furniture here creating a bit of natural lag in the room a bit of furniture over here and here okay there's glass not necessarily the best thing you can have but again all of this stuff kind of acts like a like a time delay mechanism that makes the sound more digestible so uh, yeah worth experimenting with that and um good room good room and here i just wanted to show you guys a picture that i found that there's no sidewalls if you don't have sidewalls and you don't have internal walls here i mean this could like half count as an internal wall this sound would become very mechanical bright thin and irrelevant so if you're stuck with this position at least if you have a, a a shorter distance to the the ceiling it will keep the sound more in check so something to think about and i found a picture of martin design speaker and i just wanted to show that martin design are usually a bit better than uh, Verity speakers at maintaining the pressure in the room because they they have a bigger 
uh, what's it called, deeper cabinets for all of their units, especially the treble and, and the mid-range. So it keeps the sound generally um, giving it a bit more pressure, a bit more grunt, a bit more attack. And um, I think a lot of people, especially listening to harsh music, punk, metal, rock, um, pop recordings that uh, that aren't that good, I think that they're going, they're going to appreciate the Martin Design uh, way of, of solving a problem because you can more easily use this in a bigger room compared to the the Verity models that we saw previously. If you had to use a Verity model in a bigger room, you probably have to go like with the Amadis, Sarastro or the Lorengrain for it not to get too polite and thin and out of control. So it's something to take into consideration. These are like better for a smaller room. And I would say that generally when we're talking about the good models of a Martin design, I'm not going to talk about the... Uh, the bottom models like most speaker manufacturers i don't care about bottom models because most of the bottom models of most speaker manufacturers are crap and i'm just going to say it's crap and we shouldn't focus on that and nobody should own that type of stuff if they can avoid it they should try and go with stuff that's closer to the mid-range and perhaps like close to the top but I mean, money's a limit, so we can't all all be um, getting the uh, the good gear. So yeah, try to 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 find these models. Generally, when you're looking at speakers, have some have just a model that has a big cabinet. I mean, sounds stupid, but a big cabinet usually helps a lot with stabilizing the sound and making sound travel better in a bigger room. So. I would say that's like one of the big advantages of having a Martin design speaker is that it's easier filling up a room that's 25 to 35 to 45 square meters compared to some other similar uh, class of gear like um, Verity or I wouldn't say Audino but some, some other brand in, 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 in that class. So worth considering. And uh, like here, von Schweikert speakers. I haven't heard a lot, but uh, just look at how deep they are. <laughs> just imagine the, the amount of, of, of uh, people that have to lift this up and go up the stairs and, and park it here. That must be really difficult moving the speaker, but it does look pretty cool. That um, when you have a deep speaker, there's usually a lot of pressure that comes with that speaker and that is a very cool thing to experience so if you're going from like a bookshelf speaker to like a deep speaker like this you, you'll notice that just power control and especially that pressure so much pressure it like shoots out like a cannon that's very cool and uh, that's useful for when you have a, a big room so um one thing i just want to mention in the end is that you want to avoid symmetrical rooms meaning that you have this uh, five times five times five meter uh, symmetry going on because that that apparently creates a very bad acoustic i have heard it before it usually creates a lot of chaos so you want to remember that typically from the front to the back wall that would typically have to be 10 to 25 percent longer if it goes past 25, it's usually not so good. And if it's less than 10%, it's again, usually not that good. Still, I'm generalizing, so I, I can't, you know, tell you something that an audio acoustic room expert would, would, would say that's more qualified at, at guessing what would fit you more. So this is just like a general rule you have to consider. You don't want a three times, three times, three meter or six times six times six or ten times ten times ten um you want to avoid that so just that you're aware of that if you have the possibility of changing that and uh, try and check out my other videos because there is a lot of value waiting 
for you there so go and watch them all and if you can give me a like that would that would help my channel a lot so i can produce more videos and you know if you watch all of my videos it's it's literally like someone handing you uh one hundred thousand dollars if you think about the amount of value that goes in in um, me exchanging my ideas and sending them over to you i mean i've learned so much throughout the years and you will save so much money on crap gear crap combinations stuff you should and should not do you will save a lot of time and it will make a lot of the things that you listen to in the future make a lot more sense so you don't have to buy the stuff that i think is the best just use everything that i say as something that can perhaps guide you and identify the things that you find to be relevant so that you can change your own sound so yeah if you can like and subscribe that would help me a lot this is me logging out.